July 12, 2016, Springfield Township Board of Trustees regular meeting. Mr. Burney? Yes. Mr. Burney? Present. Ms. McFarland? Present. And Joe will not be here. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. the date for the board to conduct the annual public hearing on the tax budget in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code section 5705.28 and 5705.30. I will call to order the public hearing on the 2017 tax budget. I would like to note that the proposed 2017 tax budgets been available in the administrative office of the township for public inspection and review in accordance to the Ohio Revised Code since July the 1st. Mr. Hinnenkamp, would you please provide the report and summary of the 2017 tax budget? Be happy to do so, Mr. Burning. Uh, as you mentioned, this is the required public hearing as part of, uh, of what's required by the Ohio Revised Code, something we do annually. This actually it, when, when you adopt the budget, it's a little misnomer, and I say this every year. This actually is the start of our budget process, and, and this is generally uh, referred to as the tax budget. Um, what the tax budget is, is it, it shows kind of the history uh, for the last two years, the actuals in terms of revenues and expenditures for the past two years, and then in the current year, it shows the actuals for the first half, so in other words, the first half of 2016, and then estimates for the second half of 2016, and then estimates for uh, 2017 um, is, is how, it's, how it's projected. What the budget is really designed to do is more, kind of like more of a function um, on anticipated revenues. Uh, that's where our focus is. Uh, the 2017 expenditures projections are generally based on what we maximally would could expect to expend in those totals. As I mentioned, um, this is really kind of the start of our budget cycle, which ends in March. Uh, we'll end in March of 2017 with the adoption of the permanent appropriations. Uh, so this really uh, begins the process. Once the board uh, adopts the budget, which are required by law to do uh, by July the 20th, we would forward that to the County Budget Commission. The County Budget Commission uh, will then return to us what is uh, basically our certified revenues. And they generally do that by, by the end of September of each year. Those revenues are then what we then know we have available to spend and it really allows you to do what most people think of as the budget process. So a little bit kind of a, a you know, semantics, but a little bit of a misnomer when you're adopting your budget. Uh, this is more, I would say, of an accounting document than it is really a policy document. So the board's not establishing where you're going to spend your money and, and those types of things. You're just allocating where you expect funds to be available, what you anticipate some of those expenditures to be uh, in a much more general uh, kind of sense. Having said that, I know the board has copies um, of the actual uh, proposed tax budget in front of you. There's really not a whole lot to, uh, to point out, I guess, looking, looking back over the last two or three years from a revenue standpoint and uh, specifically across all funds, but more specifically right now in the general fund. Really, the only thing that's really been much different is, of course, been the, uh, uh, the added revenues generated from, from the JEDS tax, uh, which we're anticipating and estimating here to be just a little bit under $2 million. Uh, in this budget, uh, from a other than that, pretty much the revenues are, are pretty flat or generally in keeping with what they've been over the last uh, two or three years. From an expenditure side, really the only major differences where you see some fund balance differences where we anticipate some higher expenditures are, of course, again related to the uh, to the JEDS, the Residential Incentive Grant Program, which is something that started a few years ago, and then the, this year the Neighborhood Enhancement Grant Program. So those things are corresponding expenditures 
uh, programs that we talked about uh, when we did the JEDS. A few other, you know, we're seeing some increased costs as it relates to um, uh, the, you know, sort of highways, other uh, fund where we're spending a lot more. In, in particular, we've been funding SALT over the last couple of years out of the general fund as opposed to out of the road district fund. So over the last couple of years, you've seen that tick up. And then we're, of course, doing a lot more uh, infrastructure projects. And in particular, close to about a half a million dollars worth of infrastructure projects uh, in the 16th budget. And those, are, again, are, are direct result of the, the additional monies from the JEDs where we're expending those uh, focusing on some infrastructure. Other than that, really across all of the other funds, you're seeing things to be, you know, revenues within, you know, a couple percent of where they've been over the last couple of years and expenditures ticking up just a little bit uh, from an estimate standpoint, just built in some inflationary anticipated increases, but uh, really nothing else uh, of significance uh, really to call out. A little bit on the uh, on the TIF fund because we're again related to capital improvements. We're expending some some additional TIF funds this year more than what we've done in the past uh, because we're able to now use those funds to make capital improvements, and so that's where you're seeing some difference there. But pretty much across all the other funds, um, very little very little difference from from what we've been talking about. So um, that's really all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, board has any. Do we know yet, uh, or is it too early to know what SALT's going to cost us? Or we do know. In fact, uh, we got some good news. Uh, we did uh, receive the bid notice. Uh, we, uh, again, for I think the third or fourth straight year, we just sort of decided to be with the ODOT mm -hmm. um, statewide bid, and I think that's proven to be a, a good move for us. And Mike, I'm trying to remember, was it $55 or $50 a ton? Fifty dollars and ninety-one cents. Fifty ninety-one, which is down. I think last year we paid sixty-eight. Seventy dollars and forty-one. Oh, okay. That's so great news. It's good news there. Yeah. Um, from that standpoint, and we stay in. What's our total? The bins probably. I'm sorry. What, what, how much are we ordering? Yeah. Well, how much? I'm trying to think. We have about half right yes. now. But the, the, yeah, we're going to try to take advantage of the lower cost on materials, and we're, we're planning to order or purchase thirty-five hundred tons of salt. Okay. In a mild, relatively mild winter in, uh, in 16, certainly helped. As you know, I'm not going to make any no, declarations. Just don't even talk about it, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> sitting here in July and you're talking about snow. Good move. Great, great job. Good news. <laughs> good news. Do you have any other questions or comments? That's, that's all I have. Okay, I'd like to ask now if there's anyone in the audience that would like to comment on the 2017 tax budget. No one? Yeah. Robert Collins, 853 Finney Trail. And Mike just mentioned that the budget was available in the office. Uh, how, was that not how was that information given to everyone that that budget was available? We were required to advertise. And where was it advertised? Because I was not aware of it. Advertised in the, in the community press, I believe, Kim. Yes. Yeah, it's but where, everyone. It's where we do our it. legal note. Where we do generally all of our legal notices. But if you don't get the community press, then where do you go? Because I don't get it. But if you were someone who does not have a computer, how do you become aware? Okay, in that newspaper again, if you don't receive it, how, how are you to become aware of what's going on? Go on the website. Mr. Collins, all I can tell you is that's that's what the law requires: is that it be advertised in a publication of general circulation. Do you have a, a contract with? Uh, What's the, what's the newspaper? Yeah. Yeah. So if I live on a street and I do not get that newspaper and I do not have a computer, then 
I'm at a loss as to what's going on in the township. Well, you know now we, you're here at the meeting. And well, yeah, well, yeah, so let me talk about myself. What about some of the other people? We're legally required to advertise it in the paper, and that's what we do. Well, we announced it at this meeting. Last, the last meeting we set the time, we announced that it'd be available as well. I don't recall that being announced, but... We did. The board did. At the, at the last regular meeting, a month ago, not last week. Well, as you know, I attend each meeting. But we did yeah, The board set the public hearing date. They mm -hmm. actually passed the motion to set the hearing for this, for this evening, that night. Okay. Anybody else in the audience? Okay, given that there is no one else in the audience that wishes to address the board regarding the 2017 tax budget, I'll now seek a motion to close the public hear hearing portion of the meeting. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Bernie? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Meeting's closed. The board will now consider the adoption of the 2017 tax budget a little later in the meeting under the resolution portion of the meeting when we consider resolution number 59-2016. Gwen, I think you wanted to I, say uh, something. I just wanted to uh, express my gratitude to the community residents who have uh, called me as well as spoken with our police department expressing their, their, their gratitude for the services that our police and our first responders provide. Uh, and it's kind of nice to get that feedback in light of what's been happening in the past week. <clears throat> and um, I also uh, think it's important that we, we look at and continue to support our police and our first responders and the citizens in Springfield Township as well. And just asking for peace, prayers, unity, and I would like to take a moment just uh, of silence, just again, uh, for all those communities across the United States, not just Springfield Township, that are dealing and coping with the, uh, some of the concerns that we have occurring now, not only in the past week, but thus far since we've had our last meeting. So could we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have meetings from the May 10th regular board meeting, the May 24th regular board work session, the June 14th regular board meeting, and the June 29th regular board meeting. I'm sorry, the regular work session. If there's no corrections or revisions to the meeting minutes, I entertain a motion for approval as written. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, I just note there's also a public hearing uh, on May 25th. I'm not sure you mentioned that one. Uh, minutes for the public hearing that we had on the 25th. I did not. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, motion carries. Okay, next, Mr. Burning, may we please have the financial report? Yes, um, for the month ending June 30th, 2016, the township's expenditures were $2,092,873.08, and the receipts were $3,372,734.50. That gave us a cash balance ending of $18,458,920. That includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvement projects and investments. What I request is a motion to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, updated and current revenues and reports for the period ending June 30th, 2016. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. And I just want everyone in the audience to know that the financial reports are available for viewing at the administrative offices, weekdays, during regular business hours, and on our website anytime. Thank you. Okay, next, Mr. Hennenkamp, would you please give us your report on departmental action and discussion items? Yes, yes sir. On the website? On, on the website or whatever you 
Yes. Okay, it does give us the, the, the total report. Yes, it does. The only thing I believe that's consolidated is, is payroll. Yeah, the only thing consolidated that's not detailed is payroll. Okay. Is my name on there? I don't know your name, but I could sure check later if you want me to. <laughs> Mr. Hankins. Thanks. Yes, just one action tonight, uh, Ms. Burning, and that is to set the rental rates for the Grove Event Center and Senior Center for 2017. Uh, actually, if you look at the rates, the rates are generally being kept the same. There's just uh, three policy changes that Tom is recommending. Uh, they have to do with, uh, two of them have to do with uh, rates involving the Senior and Art Center. And it's basically, uh, I know you have a copy of each one of these, three, these things. One has to do uh, with requiring uh, users on the breakdown of tables and chairs. Um, and uh, the other is, uh, has to do with uh, what the price would be if you, if you call to add time to your rental uh, agreement in less than 48 hours that that rental rate is then doubled. But the issue that we're running into there is people are adding to it and it requires us to, to bring somebody in to account for that. So it's basically just not being able to, you know, if we have to do that, we have to compensate. Um, the employee has to come in if it's not scheduled in less than 48 hours. And then the third piece uh, or the third request uh, of the change just has to do with uh, pricing on beverage. So pretty small changes. I think the major uh, pricing for the uh, for the halls itself, no, no changes recommended for 17. So just looking for a motion from the board uh, to adopt and set those rental rates for 2017. And so anyone that does, uh, that meets with our, with uh, the rental department and discusses opportunities, they will explain and go through all of these so that there are no surprises. It's all, all in the agreements. Mm -hmm. yep. So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, just a couple of uh, discussion items. Uh, I know we've done this, I think, over the past few years. We, uh, we always receive something um, asking the board to declare uh, the week of August the 7th through the 13th, 2016, as National Health Center Week. Uh, and this is a request that we receive from the community health centers uh, in our area. And I know the board has, has generally uh, signed a proclamation on that request. So again, this is basically uh, centers um, that that are generally located in areas that are where there, where these areas are generally underserved for medical uses, and that's where the purpose of these centers uh, are. I don't believe we have one in the township, but there one there is one in Mount Healthy. There's one in Mount Healthy. It's for yes. those who are underserved, and it allows easy access. So they're located in different parts of the county so that an individual can get to them as, as quickly as possible uh, in their neighborhood or as near geographically to their neighborhood. So this is, a, I think it's a yeah. great no, no action, No action needed, just mentioning no. that, that you'll, you'll see that proclamation uh, come by. And then also wanted to mention that we did receive notice from Duke Energy, and Duke will be performing uh, inspections on uh, gas metering equipment and piping uh, areas located inside buildings uh, throughout the township. We don't have any specific areas. This is something that's required by the U.S. Department of Transportation, and this will actually be performed by a company called that's a contractor of Duke called Southern Cross Inc. And all of their uh, employees should have a uniform on, clearly identifying uh, them as a Southern Cross Inc. employee, as well as a picture ID, so that. This will be taking place uh, sometime in uh, in the month of August. And so what did you say the purpose of that is? Uh, it's inspection for gas metering equipment and piping. Do they randomly do it? I don't know. This is as much as I have. It's just that they'll do it. I think we've received this notice every year for the last three or four years. It's something that they have to do. I don't know if it's every property. It's certain types of property. Um, but there is more for more information. Um, there is a there's a uh, website that you can go to. to find so do out they more. have to register with us before they come into our community? No. Mm. Public utility. Mm. 
I could see that could be a little uncomfortable for some people. And um, the only other thing I have is the, uh, the personnel update. Um, this month in the police department did accept the resignation of Alicia Hovell as a dispatcher. Uh, her effective date was June 15th and we did uh, hire Zach Davis as a part-time dispatcher, effective date of June 21st, and did accept uh, two resignations, or did accept the resignation of a summer help, uh, Joseph Hennenkamp, seasonal labor, effective date of the 24th of June, and did hire Lauren Bass, seasonal labor, on June the 17th. The only other thing that I've got is just to bring the board up to date um, on something that Kim and I have been working on Kim Cox, our finance director, uh, a few months back, I can't remember the exact time, we did engage the firm uh, OpenGov, uh, and this is uh, something that uh, we're looking at primarily for internal use as to how we're going to be able to use some of the tools available in the uh, electronic platform that they have. This will also lead, I think eventually, we'll, we'll want to have an advanced sort of version of what we do on our finance report. Uh, we are working on that. Uh, right now, we're hoping that you know, by the end of the year, we're also going to time this with a revamp of our website. So as we go in with our 2017 budget, we're hoping to have all of this information available that will not only have 2017's information on there, but we'll be able to go back. Uh, I don't think we've probably four years, right, Kim? We weren't able to, UAN was missing the module, so we couldn't get back. So we'll be able to go back to 13. What we want to do is be basically have Apple's to Apple's comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're in the process of sort of coding all of those things. So as this thing reports out where somebody says, you know, how much did you spend on X, it'll be comparable and be comparing the right things and the right funds from each year. So it's not a complicated process. It's just a very labor intensive process to get that coding correct. So we're making progress on it. And uh, as I said, it's going to, you know, we're starting to, you know, start to see and, and become familiar with what it more from an internal day-to-day -day use but as I said by the end of the year we should have that up and hopefully that'll coincide as I said with the uh, with the update to our website and we worked out uh, and corrected the errors that they had before where they had us confused with another Springfield Township that really didn't have anything to do with open gov I mean, oh okay. something that was uh, that was the tri that was uh, Josh Mandel's office the posting oh, of that okay. information this is something totally different this is what the township will own and what we'll have available on our own well, website. That's, that's much more. Yeah, we've talked to the uh, we've talked to uh, the treasurer's office about that, and, and I, I'm assuming they corrected that. Uh, but you know, once the information is on our website, it's going to be pretty easy to have that mm -hmm. same information go. They didn't want us to send interim things up now while we were working on it. We're going to do it all at one time to okay. sort of that makes avoid sense. confusion and avoid a lot of the mistakes. But um, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, like I said, our funds, when you look at UAN, the way, the way a lot of these funds don't, don't get reported into the same way that, you know, a resident who wants to say, how much are you spending on X? Mm -hmm. It's sort of difficult to find that if you just get a printout on UAN. You really have to dig through that information. So this will be much more user-friendly. Well, that's what we want to continue doing and, and make it much more transparent, which we've, which we've always been transparent. And had well, it's, it's that, but I think the, the bigger part of it is going back to those years to make sure that you're comparing them. If you want to look at what, you know, how do we do 13 compared to 14 compared to 15 mm -hmm. compared to 16, you've got to be comparing the, the same amount, the same funds, the same mm -hmm. codes, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Uh, Kim, I'll turn things over to you and ask you to... Give us an update on community events and programs. Thank you. Um, Arts Connect has been doing our summer concert series. We've uh, had two, and there's two left. The next one is um, next Thursday on July the 21st, and we're bringing the band Second Wind, which is an R&B band. Um, we're also using that time to do our ball drop. It's our big fundraiser that we do for our community <coughs> concerts that the um, fire department helps us out with. Um, on August the 4th is our final concert, and that's with the Cincinnati Civic Orchestra. That will be indoors inside the Grove Banquet Hall. And then we'll be moving straight into our dinner theaters. We've got dinner theaters in August, September, and October, starting with um, Jackie Robinson um, on August the 12th. And our last one.
last concert, we had a pretty good turnout in spite of the weather predictions. You know, I was I impressed. It's been kind of sketchy. Yeah. Mark, that's, uh, I know the board has copies of the departmental activity reports, but uh, other than that, if there's a question, that's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Hennenkamp. We have five resolutions onto the agenda before the board tonight. The, the first one is resolution number 58-2016, authorizing the trade-in of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit-for-use motor vehicles, road machinery, equipment, or tools in the service department. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Resolution carries. We have resolution number 59-2016, adopting the 2017 tax budget. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Resolution carries. We have resolution number 60-2016, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87 at various listed properties within Springfield Township and authorizing statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Resolution carries. We also have resolution number 61-2016, establishing assessment for abatement of nuisance and certifying same to the Hamilton County Auditor. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Resolution carries. And resolution number 62-2016, declaring a dangerous property condition at 1264 Urit Court. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Resolution carries. Aren't we supposed to have... Yeah. Go ahead. What I would say at this time, um, since the board has declared the property a dangerous property, that the board set a public hearing to allow all lien holders of record to present to the board why the property should not be continue to be declared dangerous and eventually raised uh, by the township. I would ask that the board schedule that hearing for our next regular schedule meeting on August 9th at 4.45 p.m. prior to have that prior to the actual regular board meeting at 5.30. I'm not sure what's going on with this microphone, so I apologize. 4.45? Yes, please. I think you have Heinfeldt's on. Tom Price said it because he was sit so far back from it, so. I guess. <laughs> Must be it. So you That's tuned it super sensitive. That time works okay for me. Okay. So I would ask the board to entertain a motion to set that public hearing for the dangerous property condition at 445 on August 9th. Yeah. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Is there any old business before the board tonight? I have none. I have none. Is there any new business? I have just a quick update. Uh, I've had several meetings with the uh, Sharonville uh, Convention Center uh, CEO, Jim Down, and it looks like the uh, construction of the hotel that uh, is underway is on schedule. It looks good, and we have a nice relationship with uh, not only the Sharonville Convention Center, but the Blue Ash one as well. So the hotel is projected to have five floors. So any of you all that, let's say you have a family reunion and you're looking for a place for your family to hold their reunion or et cetera, uh, it should be completed by, by, I think, March of next year. And it's looking really, really good. It's going to kind of connect with the convention center as it is now. So um, when you drive down Chester Road, when you get a chance, just look at it. Uh, there's been a lot of activity, more activity from the uh, county residents because, you know, it's on the northern side of the county and a lot of people are not interested nor can they uh, get downtown or want to have their, their meetings downtown so they're beginning to use that Sharonville Convention Center much more often, much more frequently. So uh, that's just an update on what's going on there. So it's looking good. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. McFarland. Okay, it's now citizen participation. Is there anyone in the audience here tonight that would like to address the board? If, if so, I would ask you to please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Reverend Bryce, and I'm with the Lexington Heights Civic Association. Most of you guys know me. Um, I have taken the place of Les, uh, Chester Banks, and the Civic Association has some interest, interesting things that they'd like to bring to you for your attention. Um, if you are part of the association, would you please stand? These that you see before you, and there are others that uh, participated in a meeting. We issued a call out to the community, and the call was successful. There were people that came and expressed several interests about things that were taking place in the community. The issues were so large that we narrowed it down to the more serious complaints. And those complaints came out to be uh, involving people in the neighborhood shooting guns after dark in a specific area and there were some issues about some properties that were supposedly Section 8 tenants or properties that were not up to code or that the people felt um, were bringing down the neighborhood. So those issues were placed in a petition. And today, I've got this petition here at the request of the body with other signatures to put before this council so that you guys can take it and to do what we feel needs to be done to bring this, this area up to par. I know that the gun issue is a police issue. I intend within the very near future to contact the chief and to sit down and to see if he and I can come up with something. Um, but the other issue involving the, the, the properties, I realize that that falls under the jurisdiction of somebody on the board. So, so that we all know what we are expecting out of each other, I'd like to present this petition to you guys so that we can uh, work together to bring these issues up to par. I don't know who gets it, but I'm going to start here, and anybody that wants to read it that's on the board can pass it on down. Okay? And of course, anybody that needs to get in touch with me, um, my number is 513-328-9785. And it's okay to give me a call anytime. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I have a legal pad. It's not all full of notes for me to, to talk about. <laughs> so. uh, my name is Steve Stuhlreier. Uh, I live at 8573 Brent Drive. Um, been a resident of Springfield Township since 2005. Grew up in Green Hills, uh, moved there in 1972. I own a business here in, in the township called Restoring Hope Counseling and Coaching. It's located uh, behind uh, Brentwood Printing and Uncle Bill's Garden Center off Wind Road. So in my company, we, we uh, provide counseling and educational services for people with mental illness, um, suicide, depression, anxiety, trauma recovery, and addictions. And, and, and in regards to the addiction issue, is why I'm here this evening. So uh, because I grew up in Green Hills, uh, I'm really committed to this area. I love this, love this area. So I, I have a concern that I think we probably all have, and that's in, 
in regards to the issue regarding the opiate addiction. So I had the, I had the uh, privilege of meeting with Chief Browder a few months ago. Uh, he, he gave me some time, uh, met with uh, Gwen um, several weeks ago, months ago, and Gwen and I sit on a board together at the Y, so we've gotten to know each other. So in those, in those meetings, one of the things I became aware of was that there's a task force in the township, don't know much about the task force other than it's there, and one of the things that it's, it is attempting to address is the opiate addiction issue. Um, please correct me if I if I misrepresent any of that. Now the task force is a good thing, it, it, but it sits at a very high level with uh, with a lot of stakeholders you know, trying to address this issue. Um, one of the concerns I have, of course, with the opiate addiction, is that they, those task force are great, but they but the community does not really get involved uh, as much because either we're not aware that the task force is there or that the needs there, or there could be other reasons as well. So what I met with Chief Browder, shortly after I met with him, I met with Chief Fertleman of Green Hills and suggested to Chief Fertleman, because I'm a Green Hills grad, and by the way, I think I know your husband, right? <laughs> um, because I'm a Green Hills grad, I and my parents lived there until a couple years ago when my father passed away, my mom moved to assisted living. Um, I expressed a, a desire to maybe hold a community forum in Green Hills uh, regarding how the community can uh, respond to the opiate addiction. So Chief Fertleman bought into that. Uh, he actually led the drive on that. It was a huge turnout in Green Hills um, at the Village Troubadour, a standing room only. On the panel uh, was myself, Chief Fertleman, Chief Tom Sinan from um, Newtown, Sheriff Jim Neal, uh, the Hamlet County Sheriff, undercover narcotics officer. Um, and the Green Hills Narcotics Investigator. Senior room only went on for 90 minutes, lots of questions, a lot of energy in the room, and afterwards for about another hour, a lot of Q&A. Um, so one of the things I learned from Chief Browder and Chief Fertleman, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I misrepresent you, um, is that about 90% of the calls that the law enforcement respond to, um, mental health issues and addiction issues are involved with that as influence. Is that correct? And was that roughly about 90%. So this is a big, big deal. Um, we work with a lot of people in recovery and um, many people follow th the process to recovery. Uh, one of the things I heard from law enforcement from Sheriff Neal and Chief Fertleman and Chief Sinan was that law enforcement does, and they all said this separately, so I think it's something they probably talk about, but you can't, the police will not be able to arrest themselves, out, arrest, arrest enough people to get us out of this problem. So Chief Sine and I had dinner before the panel, and he very strongly suggested that what was needed in the communities was a grassroots effort to start addressing this issue, to come alongside the police, come alongside the governing bodies, and address this issue. So um, I, I sp he, he spoke pretty directly to me about that. As a small business owner, would I be involved with that? And he spoke very directly to the community as well. Um, at, I, I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into, but I tend to do this. I committed to Chief Sinan that I, my company and I would take the lead on establishing a grassroots effort to address the opiate issue. Now, with the, with the task force going on, which is a great thing, by the way, um, my company and I are interested in somehow leading this process, not just in Springfield Township, it's where I live is where I do business, so I want the good communities where my kids are in the Finney Town School District. But also, countywide, Tom Sinan, uh, if you don't know, is also one of the leaders of the Hamlin County Heron Task Force as well. So he and I are trying to meet up sometime early in August for lunch to talk about this um, in more depth. So one of the things, you know, I, I'm not one to just kind of bring a problem. I want to try to bring a possible solution. So one of the things I, I would ask from you all for some feedback, and I'm, again, willing to take some lead on this, is um, my company, Restoring Hope, and I would like to partner with the township in some form or fashion, whatever that looks like, to begin to address this issue. Now, because the community forum in Green Hills was so successful, and they're talking about wanting to have a, a second one, um, that I would like to offer to lead that 
or work in partnership with the trustees or, and the police department, the fire department, the EMTs, anybody else who's willing to come alongside and say, let's do this. In my opinion, it would be more effective if the township could announce it. You have a lot more credibility than my company that's been in the, in the township for six months, <laughs> okay? So uh, we would like to partner with you if the township would be willing to partner with us. I'm happy to help put it together. I'm happy to lead it um, and, and work with the appropriate stakeholders in the community to make that happen. Um, in addition to that, I would, my company and, I, and myself and anybody else that would want to be involved, I would like for small businesses in the community and interested residents to uh, meet with me at some point as we move forward to try to stand up against this issue. The only way that this issue gets resolved is if the community gets educated about it and if we come together to try to address this issue. Uh, one of the things we, we know is that heroin is not the only thing that's being abused. We got fentanyl coming in, which makes the heroin use even worse. Something called crocodile is, is supposed to be coming, that's even worse. Uh, allegedly, uh, you know, this, if it ever gets better, the research, the addiction researchers indicate that this will get worse before it gets better, if it ever gets better. And this area of the country is being hit very strongly with, with the opiate issue. So I just want to offer that to you all. I uh, would like to be part of it. We'd like to, if there's any response from anybody, any feedback at this point, I'd like to, like to hear it. I have a question. Yes. I'm not familiar with crocodile. Can you Yes. Find that a little more, please. Yeah, crocodile is a, they call it crocodile because people inject it and then the injection site, the area where they inject turns green and becomes scaly. So it looks like a crocodile. Oh. My understanding is it's a mixture of codeine, heroin, gasoline, and paint thinner. Wow. Uh, it originated in Russia, it's, and they've seen some in Lima, Ohio, and Dayton, Ohio, from my understanding. Things tend to come down the I-75 corridor, so guess who's south of, of Dayton? Cincinnati and we're not, the township's not far off of I-75. You're acknowledging that these things are true, Chief? Yeah, they are true. Um, the whole crocodile thing is, I think, originated from the whole methamphetamine thing and the, the chemicals that mix together, how someone could do that and survive one time is, is beyond me from, from the mixture of what, what we know crocodile to be. But um, again, with the fentanyl, um, we're actually seeing a little more powder cocaine back on the streets now because of the fear of the heroin being mixed with the fentanyl. So certainly, either way, a deadly combination. So, so communities have pushed this back, by the way, in the past, in other places in the country when communities have stood up. And Tom Sinan said to the group in Green Hills over and over again, we can use MAD as the example of Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. He said to them, if the police or the trustees go to the legislatures, uh, the people that, that fund these things, they tend to turn a deaf ear, but you get a room full of pissed off moms who've lost their kids. It's a different story. And so we kind of want to try to get, um, what, my, what my desire is to be um, just the community people to come and stand up with you all to talk to you about what they experienced so you're educated about it. It goes to the people that could provide money and funding for more police or whatever the need be for treatment, for prevention. All these things are possible. Other communities have done it. Um, and done it successfully, there's no reason why the township couldn't either, and, and I, I'm willing to be part of that, that solution. Steve, uh, uh, Chief and I had discussed, you know, the email that you'd sent us and are very interested, and in our last community police task force uh, meeting, there was a, an interest in learning more about the opiate problem, and not only in, if, I guess, basically seeing how that impacts our township as a whole, but also the surrounding communities. And uh, I'm impressed with the short-term therapy approaches that your company is using. So I, we really are looking at perhaps having you at our next meeting in the fall. Okay. Because having a meeting in the summer, um, not pe people are not that available. They're on vacations and all that right. stuff. And I think it's very, very critical that we get that information out as a learning opportunity to the residents in our community. Right. So we definitely know that we wanted to have you at the, the next meeting that we have. Okay, well, and then there's a business association. Kim, can you tell them about that? They're actually he's a business speaking person. at the next meeting. They're the last Wednesday of the month in your office. Yes. Okay. Right. So, right. We, so his, his office is right in the township, which is good. Right. 
I think everyone knows somebody who has been affected by it, and I think anything we can do to try to, I know it's a long process to get past it, but anything we can do to help, we would certainly be interested in doing. Okay. So, so what, what I would say maybe in, in, as I finish here is uh, I think a, a really important thing is to get face to face with the, with the um, residents of the community. And the, the format of the community forum that we had in Green Hills, you're welcome to talk to Chief Fertleman about that to hear more about how that was set up. It was, it was a fantastic event. There's probably 80 people in a room that sat 50. Um, and if we could add a bigger room, more people would have come. Um, so an important, what I would think an important step would be is to have the community where we perhaps go to places in the community where the people are at versus inviting them to come here um, and, and have a forum that way, just open forum, some education going out, but also we probably had an hour's worth of questions and people just lost not knowing where treatment was, why can't the police just get this taken care of? And the, the, the law enforcement people responded to that very well. Uh, and it was very productive. It helped to have Sheriff Jim Neal there uh, as well, because you see his name on the billboard. He's, he's not much nicer than his face looks on the billboard. Um, but it was great to have everybody respond and the community respond very positively to him. The other thing that we did tonight, we uh, again uh, have a had a, well, we had a resolution regarding neighborhood health centers. And the one in Mount Healthy would be a good contact because that's near. And as I said, we're all surrounded and we inter interact with each other. And I think that's important. So Dolores Lindsay is the contact person there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else would like to address the board? If there's no other business before the board, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. adjourned.